Hello everyone. Today we will talk about uh, isolectic point of uh, protein, peptides and amino acid. And uh, calculation of theoretical isolectic point value is also called PI. So calculation of theoretical PI value for a protein and uh, experimental PI value and why these two values are different in case of protein that also will be covered in today's lecture. So before that, isolectic point uh, as per definition is a pH value where net charge on any ionizable compound is zero. Net charge zero means you have at that pH value, you will have same number of positive and negative charge groups in that compound. So that will give rise to zero net charge and where it occurs, the pH value where it happens, that pH value is called uh, pi of that compound. So basically, uh, pi is ionic property of any compound, ionic property which, we, which depends on nature and number of ionic groups present in that compound. So let's take a smallest example of the simplest amino acid, glycine. Glycine, as we know, glycine has one amino group, an H2 group and carboxylic group. So there are two ionizable groups. It means ionic property of glycine would be determined by these two ionizable groups. And uh, so these, uh, this uh, glycine, in order to calculate uh, a pH where net charge is zero, we need to do titration of this compound, titration of glycine with respect to pH. Means when you change pH, you, for example, you increase from low pH to high pH, and then you see how these groups behave, uh, amino group and acid group with respect to change in pH, and a pH where you have uh, uh, net negative uh, net, net charge zero you have zero minus and nh3 plus existing that ph value is called pi for the glycine so these two groups in glycine they have pk values for pk value for acid group is called pk1 that is 2.3 and pk value for basic group is 9.6 is called pk2 or sometimes referred as pkb because this is basic group this PK may be called PKA because PK represents the acidic group, carboxyl group. So when you increase pH, the PK, uh, as per the PK value, the group behaves differently. So before that, what is PK value? PK value is again a pH where a group is 50% ionized. For example, if you talk about sewage group in glycine, it has PK value of 2.3, around 2.3 or 2.34. So it means at 2.3, if you keep glycine at 2.3 pH, this COH group would be 50% ionized. It means if there are 100 molecules of this compound, 50 molecules will be having COH and rest of the 50 molecule would be having COO minus. That's what you mean by 50% ionization. So, and that remain at equilibrium at the pK value. So, at, at 2.3 pH, it will exist 50% COH 50% in CO minus species. Similarly, uh, basic group amino group at uh, 9.6 pH, it will be half NH3 plus and half NH2. That's how it will behave. And there is another rule here in order to calculate charge on a group with respect to pH, which depends on the pK value. If you keep a group uh, at pH less than its pK value, that group would be protonated. This is a rule. And if you increase pH more than pK value of that group, that group that will be deprotonated. For example, carboxyl group. Here, the pK value of carboxyl group 2.3. So it means if you keep this group at low low pH lower than 2.3 value, it will be protonated mostly protonated COH, it will exist in COH, majority of the number of uh, molecules. And when you have two, when you increase, you make it 2.3, 50% will be COH, 50% CO minus. And if you increase pH more than pK value of a group, the group will be deprotonated. So COH group will lose this proton, it will become CO minus. And when you keep, keep going on increasing further and further, the concentration of COH species will be going down and CO minus will be increasing. Similar case here in case of base amino group, which is a basic group, at low pH, it groups remain protonated. So amino group become protonated, it become NS3 plus, 
and when you increase uh, pH and maybe 9.6, 50% would be NS2, 50% NS3 plus, and when you go further beyond 9.6, NH2 species is uh, keep on increasing uh, in concentration. And this concentration, relative concentration of a group with respect to change in pH can also be calculated using henderson hasselbalch equation, which we'll take one example after this lecture. Okay, so we are talking about titration. In order to calculate PI of a, uh, a group or amino acid here, glycine here, we need to do titration with respect to pH. For example, you keep glycine at to very low pH. And slowly you keep adding some base, so pH keep on increasing. And same time, you see how these groups behave. So, for example, you keep at pH 1.0. Glycine, you keep it, uh, you take a glycine, make a solution of a 1 pH, and you, you see what will happen. Because 1 pH is lower than pK value. PK, PK1 is 2.3, PK2 is 9.6. So, 1, one PK, pH is lower than both pK values. It means the both group would exist in protonated state at 1 pH. When you make protonation of amino group, that will become NS3 plus. When you make protonation of carboxylic group, that will be COOH. So this is the structure of glycine which would exist at pH 1, which is lower than both the pK values of uh, both the groups present in glycine. So now you add some base. When you add some base means you are uh, removing proton from solution. Adding base means removing proton or in, uh, increasing pH value. So when you increase pH and you reach to pH 2.3 from 1 to 2.3 slowly, so because 2.3 is pK1 equal to pK1 is a pK value of acid group, so it means uh, first equilibria would be attained. So where 50% COH, uh, this carboxyl group would be in COH state and 50% would be in CO minus. So that, that, that's what will happen. So at 2.3 pH, you will have 50% ionization, 50% ionization of carboxylic group. And if you look at the basic group, 2.3 pH is less than its pK value, pK value is 9.6. So it will again be existing in protonated state and that is NS3+. So basic group would not change at 2.3 pH because pK value is much higher than 2.3. So that's what will happen. So at PK1, PK1, this group will be in equilibrium. So again, you keep adding uh, uh, base, you keep increasing pH, or you keep removing proton from the solution. So what will happen? Slowly when you reach to pH 9.6, another second equilibrium would exist. And uh, that shows at 9.6, because PK value of a basic group is 9.6, so now this basic group would, would be deprotonated to 50%. That's the definition of pK value. 50% deprotonation of a group or 50% protonation is the same thing or 50% ionization is also the same thing. So now this group would exist in equilibrium with deprotonated state, it will become NH2. And the CO group would not change, it will be in CO minus only. Moreover, here, the concentration of CO minus would be more because you are going further away from 2.3. 9.6 is too away from uh, uh, 2.3. So CO minus concentration will keep on increasing. And uh, you have at 9.6, you have NH2 zero, CO minus. That's a charge state. So now you can now look at the charge in this in equilibrium reactions. At uh, pH 1, at pH 1, you look at the net charge. NS3 plus and COH, there is no charge in COH. Amino group is protonated, so it has plus one charge. So at one pH, charge is plus one. When you keep increasing pH, and uh, when you reach to 2.3 pH, the charge is NH3 plus, one plus, and one minus. So net charge is zero here. Now you look at here. 9.6 pH at 9.6 pH NH2 there is no charge on NH2 zero charge CO minus so net charge is minus one so that's how amino acids or even protein or peptide behave with respect to pH at low pH 
all the peptides, all the amino acids, all the proteins, they will have net charge in plus depending on present, presence of a basic group in the protein. And when you keep increasing pH, you will have a, a state where net charge becomes zero on that compound and that pH where net charge zero is called isolated point, pi of that compound. And if you go further beyond pi, if you keep increasing pH more than even pi, net charge becomes minus one. So this is the simple thing how protein peptides or amino acid behave with respect to pH. Now, you see here, so net charge is zero for glycine, you are getting zero charge where at what pH value? At 2.3 pH value, you have 50% deprotonation. So net charge minus is 50%. Similarly, at pH 9.6, equilibrium means 50% ionization. This is also equilibrium, that is also equilibrium. So at 2.3, you have 50%. At 9.6, you have 50%. So it means majority of the species would have zero charge between these two, these two pH values what you are calling pk1 and pk2 so pi in case of glycine can be written as between these two equilibria because net charge you are getting zero between pk1 and pk2 so you take average of these two so pi is equal to pk1 plus pk2 divided by 2 that will be pi for the glycine amino acid there are only two two groups so average of these two pk value can be taken as pi but if you have a more than two ionizable group in that case you have to take it differently in case of glycine it is simple to calculate pi value because there are only two ionizable groups so average of a pk value of those two groups can be taken and that will be pi value now let's uh, let's take an example of where you have more than two ionizable group like aspartic acid aspartic acid is an acidic uh, amino acid so it has uh, one extra acidic group in the side chain uh, because side chain is called R group so the pk value of that side chain acidic group is called pkr and that pkr the value of pkr is 3.6 3.6 in, uh, in case of aspartic acid and uh, pk1 which is for uh, main chain coh group is 1.9 pk2 or pkb for basic group is 9.6 so to calculate its pi let's do titration of this amino acid starting from uh, low ph to high ph so you keep uh, aspartic acid at ph say 1 very low ph so at low ph uh, because 1 ph is less than all the three pk values uh, of this amino acid so all three groups would exist in protonated state so acidic group main chain COH group would be existing in protonated again COH, side chain also COH, and the main chain basic group NS3 plus. When you increase its pH, so first uh, the pH would be say 1.9 because 1.9 is the pK value, the lowest pK value in all the groups, which is equal to main chain COH. So at pH 1.9, when you are raising pH, so 1.9 pH. This group would exist in equilibrium with its uh, deprotonated state, so you will have CO minus. So similarly, you increase pH further. So next uh, pH value would be for R group side chain group because pK is 3.6. So at 3.6 pH, this R group would be protonated. It would ionize. It becomes CO minus. And you further increase pH value when you reach to 9.6. The main chain amino group, the basic group would be in protonated state, it will lose this extra proton. So that's how the titration would occur. Now you look at the charge uh, on these amino acids at different pH values. So at pH 1, if you look at the net charge, COH group 0 charge neutral, COH neutral, and S3 plus. So you have plus 1 charge at 1 pH on aspartic acid. At pH uh, 1.9, this group is ionized, so you have 1 minus and 1 plus, this is 0. So 1 minus 1 plus means net charge would be 0 here. Now you look at uh, PS 3.6 when you reach, uh, this side chain group would ionize. So net charge here would be minus minus plus. So 2 minus 1 plus, that is minus 1. 
and when you go further say at pH 9.6 you have a minus minus and here you have zero charge because the extra proton is gone so it becomes NH2, NH2 has no charge so net charge here would be minus 2 so that's how the charge would be different at different pH values depending on the nature of groups nature of group means their uh, ionization behavior, their pK value, their acidic or basic nature so to calculate pi value you see where you are getting net charge zero because pi means pH where net charge is zero in a compound. So at aspartic acid you are getting net charge here. After at pH 1.9, after pH 1.9 you are getting net charge zero, and similarly before pH 3.6 you are getting net charge zero. It means you have to in order to calculate this pi value you have to take average of these two groups. 3.6 and 1.9 and that that would be having that would be pi of this amino acid where majority of the species majority of the ionic species here would exist with the in zero ionic state where you have uh, same number of positive and negative charge so pi in this case case of aspartic acid pi would be average of 3.6 plus 1.9 because zero zero net charge you are getting between these two pk values so you have to take average of only these two pk values so 3.6 plus 1.9 divided by 2 so that will be pi for uh, aspartic acid so you don't have to confuse here there is no role of uh, 9.6 pk here because uh, you are getting zero charge between 1.9 and 3.6 so that's why you have to take only average of these two pk value 3.6 and 1.9 you don't you don't have to consider 9.6 pH value here similarly for any other amino acid you can take any example and the same equation can be made and wherever you are getting net charge zero you just take average of pK value near about that species for example here net charge zero so near about pK is closest pK is 1.9 and the next is 3.6 so that's how you will take an average similarly can be done for any any other amino acid as well